Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'll be making a meal planner in Notion from scratch. There'll be things like a recipe book, a meal planner, a shopping list of ingredients, and some useful kitchen widgets. So because today we're starting from scratch, I'm going to start by setting up the page in the page settings on the top right. You can choose fonts and whether you want your page to be in small text or full width. There are some other settings, but these are the ones that I usually start with. Now for page titles, I usually like to use more aesthetic fonts than what Notion has out of the box for the main page. So I use this site where you can generate these pretty texts to copy into Notion as the page title, like this. Next, I'm just going to Pinterest to find a cute cover photo and a page icon. You can probably tell that my theme is going to be Ghibli and cooking. This picture of Kiki and a cat eating is so adorable and on theme. And now heading back to Notion, we can add in our cover photo and page icon. I'm going to use a little animated calcifer gif and also the cover photo we found on Pinterest before. We're going to be building out the page from top to bottom. I'm going to start with a call out block for a little quote about food and you can change the little icons like a pancake for example and you can also change the color of the block to match your theme. Then I'm going to be adding in a divider to break up the space a little bit. I don't often use the normal Notion dividers because I think they're a little bit plain. So I tend to upload an image of a colored bar that I use as dividers. Then I'm just going to be uploading a row of images that I found on Notion before and then repositioning them a little bit so they end up as a row. So some of these steps are just for aesthetic purposes because I like decorating my pages. If you don't need this, feel free to skip ahead to the other timestamps where we start making the actual meal planner. On to our next section, which is a little navigation area where we'll keep all our databases in one place. I'm also adding a two column block here, where I'm dropping the navigation section into the left column and then leaving the column on the right empty for something else later. Now let's make our first actual database where we collect our recipes. So under the navigation section, let's add in a new full page database called recipes. Here we can play around with things like adding an icon or changing the cover photo if you want. So here I'm going to go ahead and use a gallery view for my database because I think it works a bit better for a recipe book type thing. Here I'm just tweaking a little bit of the view layout settings. So now we're going to be making a template for this database, which means that when you add a new recipe, the page structure will already be set up. And now we can set up some properties, which are kind of like columns on a table. The first one I'm adding is a multi-select or cuisine. This will let me tag my recipe as a certain cuisine. And it will make it easier for me to track and find recipes later down the line. Next, I'll add a multi-select for the type of meal. With this, you can add as many options as you want. Next is a new number property for time required in minutes. A new URL field for if a recipe has an online website that I want to reference to. If you want to track other things, for example, if you count macros, then you can also put some additional properties as well where you can individually count the macros for that recipe. In the actual body of the template, I'm going to add two sections. So I'm going to have one section for the ingredients and then another section for the directions. After giving this template a name, we can just head back and it will be saved automatically. Now I'm going to set the template that we've just made into the default that this database uses. So now when you press add new, it will bring up the recipe template. So this is an example of what a recipe in this database could look like. So now that we've got some recipes, we'll move on to making our meal planner. So here we'll be making a new full page database called meal planner. And for this planner, we'll be using a calendar view. Since I plan my meals week by week, I'll choose the option to display the calendar as a week. 
and same as before, we'll also make a template for this database. We'll delete everything but the date property because we need it for a calendar view. And then we'll add in three new properties for breakfast, lunch and dinner. So these are kind of like the headings for the menu. It might look a little bit weird right now, but it'll make a lot of sense later. Next, we'll add in three relation properties. Each relation property will link our meal planner to our recipes database we made before. And this will let us choose a recipe for each meal to put into the menu for the day. So we just did one for breakfast, and now we're gonna do two more for lunch and dinner. Again, we'll be setting the menu template that we've just made into the default for the database. And then we're going to unhide the properties that we've created and rearrange the order of these properties a little bit. So we'll have heading, the recipe, and then repeat that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So now if we click on the plus button on the calendar, we can now plan our meals like this. I like to make my headings stand out more, so I'm going to be bolding and highlighting them like this. You can skip this step if you want, it's just purely for aesthetic purposes, but if you're doing it, make sure to edit the template and not just the old records, because if you do it on a template, next time it'll be ready to go. So next, we'll make a shopping list. Same thing as before, we'll add a new full page database in the navigation section. In the settings, the view that I'll be using for the shopping list will be a list view. Again, we'll also make a template for this database. Here, I'm just gonna add some tags that I think are applicable to my shopping. So obviously you can customize it to whatever works for you. And finally, adding a checkbox property for marking when an item is complete. Then I'm just going to delete all the blank records and then unhide all the properties that we just made. So it could look something like this and then we can just tick all our items off as we shop. Now we're going to pull everything together. So in the right hand side column that we made at the start, I'm putting a toggle block for the meal planner. If we use a toggle, then that means when we need it, we can expand it and when we don't need it anymore, then we can close it. So to add the meal planner, we just need to type forward slash and select a view that we made before from our meal planner data source. In the view settings, you can also adjust it to what works for you. I usually hide the database title and then I make the records show inside peak. So now we can plan our meals straight from the dashboard page like this. So next, we're going to add another divider to make a new section in the page. So this section is going to be for my recipes. Here, we'll add the gallery view from the recipes database that we made before. I want to separate my recipes into food and beverages. I can do that by adding a filter into this view for non-beverages. And then duplicate the view and change the filter to beverages. And so in this way, you can categorize as many different types of food as you want by using this method. Next, I'm going to add the shopping list view on the left hand side. And then also just configuring the view here to hide the database title and unhide a few properties that we made before. I've put the shopping list right next to the meal planner because it's easier to see what ingredients I need. And then I can add them to the shopping list like this without switching screens. So 
So this is the last section that I will add and it's a little page for some handy kitchen tools. Same as before, we're just going to start by doing a little bit of page setup. And then I'm going to be making two toggles to hold two kitchen widgets. The first one is a kitchen unit converter. And the second one is a recipe scale converter. So first is a kitchen unit converter widget. It's handy for cooking for when you want to convert between different units of measurement. Next is a recipe scale converter. So say for example if I found this recipe for muffins online and I want to double it, I just need to paste the ingredients in here and then calculate and it will give me double everything that I need. So this website's called Inch Calculator, but unfortunately if you paste this HTML code straight into Notion, it won't work. So what I did was use things like GitHub pages to turn the code into a widget that works with Notion. I won't include how to do that in this video, but there's an excellent article that shows you how to do it and the link is in the description if you're interested. So that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like or leave a comment and I will see you guys next time.